take a look at where the photo, was it in the studio, was it outside, if it was outside, what can you tell about that outside? Why was the picture taken? What's the occasion? Even if you have to guess what the occasion was, create a theory, create multiple theories about what's going on in the photo. So when, again, when, I always get back to when was the photo taken because it tells so much. When was the photo taken? Look at the type, like I discussed in the previous slide. Uh, if you look at the type of photo, you're going to narrow down at least the beginning time frame. You know it can't be any earlier. If I've got a tin type, it's not going to be any earlier than 1860. If I've got a Kodak type, it's not going to be any earlier than 1890. Unfortunately, I don't know all the provenance of all my photos, so I've got some photos that were then duplicated. So they might have been a daguerreotype or an ambrotype. They might have been something else, but what was handed to me was something that looked like a Kodak. So as you're looking at them, look at the people. Guess at their ages. It's okay to guess. I'm going to go through some, uh, some techniques to try to narrow down the ages of some folks. Um, if it is an event, research that event. Okay, so you're looking at your photos, you've collected all your clues. Check your own notes. You know, what notes do you have in your own research that has any relevance to the photo? Collect the data. If you know at least one individual, collect all the data you can on that one individual. Get to the age of the photo, and then you can expand from there. Now, each photo, depending on the clues that you found, may have its own research plan. So if it's got architecture, you're going to do research around architecture. If it's got a unique gun in it, because it's a post-Civil War photo, you're going to do research on guns. If you get a particular individual, research their entire family line, not just immediate, but go broad. Um, if it's got the studio on it, research everything you can about the studio. All it takes is to take the photographer's name and the studio location, put it into Google, and you're going to get some hits about that particular photographer, the where he was working, when he was working. Get the census records, get more understanding of where, get the provenance, get more understanding of where the photo came from, and tap into your network. You're not the only one out there researching this line or trying to find this photo. So first case study, who's Aunt Mary Soul? These two photos, I know the provenance from my wife, from her father, and I'm assuming he got it from his father. And they were given to me on what looked like photographic paper. So I lost any kind of context of what the original photo looked like. So if we take this first one, and I'm calling it the photo with Parmelia because I was given a cheat sheet that looked like that. So my father-in-law had photocopied it and penned in all the names. But if we look at this photo, let's take a look and some of those clues that I was talking about. Who's in the center? We've got an, an older couple in the middle. I knew nothing about this photo. Um, this is a family unit. So we've got an older couple. We've got either their daughter or their son, spouse, and the next generation of children. So th to me, this looks like three generations of close family. It is either a park or a backyard setting which almost gives it kind of an informal kind of a feel to it. Um, and maybe it's closer to the 1890s. But what I do know, I do know a little bit about this photo, less about the next one. I know, supposedly because of the cheat sheet, I know who everyone is. And I know that the youngest was born in 1879 and that the 
William Sr. and the wife Margaret both died in 1898. So now I've narrowed the range of the photo between 79 and 1898. So to get a little bit closer to what's going on, I pulled the 1880 census. I pulled the 1889 census for the family. So we've got the husband, William Clark, his wife, Margaret, there are four boys, William, George, Charles, and Roy, and his father, William, and William's wife, Elizabeth. So already I've got a discrepancy in the photo. My father-in-law has labeled the, um, the oldest woman in the middle, Parmelia. I know, because this is the 1880 census, that Parmelia, that can't be Parmelia, it's got to be Elizabeth. So, even though my father-in-law was an experienced genealogist, people make mistakes. So it's kind of a trust what you get, but verify. So now, take that photo, cross out Permelia, put in Elizabeth. So now I want to get to the age of this photo. Again, I'm looking at the census. I'm looking at the age of the boys in 1880. So I know that William is 10, uh, George is 8, Charles is 5, Roy is 1 in 1880. Now I'm looking at the kids. There's Roy, and I'm just going to start guessing. Let's just say he is 4 there, which would make this 1883. But if he's 4, then... Charles is eight, and he looks a little bit older than eight, and makes him 11, and makes him 13. Now, I'm probably a little low here, so I'm gonna start boosting the age. I'm gonna say Roy is um, five or six, and that would make Charles 11, and George uh, 13, and William closer to 15. Now, visually, I think I'm getting much closer with those numbers and it really does get me to an age of the photo of about 1885. Now, I'm pro even if I'm off by a year or two, it's, we're still pretty good. At least I'd get it down to a year plus or minus one. So now we're looking at a family, 1885. So that'll be helpful when we're looking at other aspects. So if we look at the photo with Aunt Mary Soul, Again, I got a cheat sheet. And in my cheat sheet, it says that the older woman seated towards the center is Aunt Mary's soul. Um, I know everybody else. I know the kids. I know the husband, wife. There's a gentleman in the back named Frank Reed. And it's spelled R-E-A-D, and it's got a cross out. So e even my father-in-law wasn't quite certain. Now, this is an interesting name, Frank Reed, because the wife's name is Margaret Reed. Could be a brother. We also have two women off to the side here, just labeled as unknown friends. So my objective for this photo is identify the unknown friends, learn more about Aunt Mary's soul, and find out if Frank Reed is really Margaret's brother. Again, if we look at the photo, what are the clues that we've got? Same backyard setting, same park setting, whatever the same setting it is. This time, William's right in the middle. You'll notice that Margaret has her hand on his rocking chair, or whatever kind of chair it is, showing a relationship. She also has her other hand on this woman's shoulder. So that may indicate that there's a closer relationship than just friend. The older woman has a prominent position towards the middle of the photo, and Frank standing off her shoulder. So as we look at the photo, I wanted to learn more about the Reed family. 
So what can the Reed family tell me about the photo? So I start pulling up the, the census records for the Reed family. Now, in my father-in-law's notes, he had the fact that William married Margaret Reed and that um, he knew her parents, Christopher and Caroline. He knew a brother named Frank. So he associated, in his notes, he said that Frank was Margaret's brother. He also had a Mary Reed in his notes and that she married a gentleman named John Payson Soul. So Mary Soul is Mary Reed married to John Soul. So as I'm going through the, the census records, I, I find the Reed family, Christopher and Caroline, their kids, Mary, Harry, George and Charles. It's interesting, uh, George and Charles, again, that name then repeats itself in the next generation for uh, the, the Clark family named two of their kids after Margaret's brothers. At the end there is two names, Alice and Sylvester McAlpin, age 10 and 6, part of the family unit of the Reed family in 1880. No relationship, but to me, there's always a relationship. Uh, maybe they were just adopted, but maybe what I'm really looking at is um, grandchildren, children of someone. So the first thing I did was I did a family search search on for marriages for the last name McAlpin for the for this husband and Reed for the wife. And I found a New Jersey marriage record for Alfred McAlpin and Caroline Carey Reed. So going back to the census, Carey is the fourth one down. Alfred's out of the picture. She's not listed as McAlpin, but there are her kids. But there's a clue that we'll see later. So I continued looking at the various census records, 1870, 1860, because I'm looking for Frank. I'm trying to figure out how Frank fits in here. There's a Francis spelled with an E in one Francis female with an E. There's a Francis I but also marked as a female. So there's a Francis, but not a Frank. So I still can't find Frank Reed in any of these. Um, but I do have a, now a complete picture that I didn't have of the Reed family. So Roy Clark, not the singer, is my, my wife's grandfather. So to get a good picture, I've got now his father, his mother. I've got Margaret's family her parents, Christopher and Caroline Matthews. And now I've got all of her siblings, Emma, Mary, Carrie, William, Frances, female, George, and Charles, no Frank. So it's still kind of a mystery there. So the get back, getting back to Aunt Mary Soul, let's find out more about her husband. So she married John Payson Soul, and as I researched them, I found their marriage record, and they were married in 1886, which is very close to the 1885 um, that my photos were taken. So the first thing I'm saying to myself is, maybe he's the photographer. Uh, what I did find out was that, I'm going to back up once. Don't know if you can read it from the back, but in 1886, roughly the same year that the photo, photo was taken, Mary Reed Soul was 43. That woman, who is labeled Mary Soul, is not 43. Uh, maybe she's 60 something, but she's not 43. That's not Aunt Mary Soul. So there's, there's a piece of my mystery. You know, why did my father-in-law think it was. Where did he get his information? 